Hello guys, if you want to know about SDS, the new Canadian study visa program, this video is for you. Here I will be discussing its details, rules and eligibility criteria, benefits and document required as well. All you need to know about SDS in just 20 seconds from now. Hello everybody, this is Shitan Shu from Dream Abroad. If you want to immigrate to Canada or Australia, Without paying hefty fee to the consultants, do visit my channel, I've got many videos and many more are coming soon for you. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider subscribing. Okay, let's get started. What is SDS? SDS stands for Student Direct Stream and this program was declared by Canadian government on 8th June 2018, that is just 3 weeks ago and it was effective from the same date. It was started to make the current process more streamlined and promote Canada as a destination of choice for international students seeking quality education. It was applicable to students applying for a study permit from four countries, India, China, Vietnam and Philippines only, and would be extended to Kenya and Senegal in future. There actually existed an old program and SDS replaced it. The old program was known as SPP, which is which is uh, called Student Partnership Program. Now, there will be a regular study permit application process, which would also continue along with the SDS. Okay, why SDS and what are its benefits? The first benefit they claim is the faster processing time. In India, it would take a maximum of seven weeks. So in China, maximum of three weeks, Philippines, maximum of five, and Vietnam, maximum of 15 weeks. Also, the another big reason was the number of colleges. More than 1,400 colleges with DLI number will now be accepted against just 47 colleges of SPP program. So what, what is the DLI number? The DLI number is Designated Learning Institution number. So all those colleges uh, which have a designated learning institution number in Canada will now be eligible for you know this SDS program. So what will this actually do? This will actually reduce the massive load on the those 47 colleges of SPP program. They were actually overcrowded. Now the success ratio of a visa approval would be much higher than the regular study permit program. If the uh, study permit program actually had the success rate of, of around 50-50, now this would have around 75 uh, to 25. So you'd have more chances, 75% chances of your visa getting approved because actually you are going through uh, all of those eligibility criteria, and you, if you're eligible then only you'll try to apply, right? So you'll have higher chances. SDS complements the express entry system as these students will be placed to continue on the path of permanent residence and citizenship of Canada after completing their studies in Canada only if they wish to. Okay, let's talk about the eligibility criteria. most important thing, right? Okay, so students must first be accepted by any recognized Canadian learning institution that is any institution having a DLI number. You should upfront pay the tuition fee for the first year of study. So for the entire year of study, you need to pay the tuition fee. You should uh, purchase a GIC certificate of 10,000 Canadian dollars, which is not actually a big amount, right? A score of minimum six in each band of IELTS is required. So this is a little change that you know might trouble some people, but uh, this is not a big change. Actually earlier it was in SPP program, it was 5.5 minimum in each band and a 6 of overall so it would it wouldn't actually you know change that much if it feels like uh, it's just a myth so don't worry about it and scoring 6 is not a big deal so don't worry about it also you should complete an upfront medical examination that is also the foremost criteria also, there's an interesting uh, another criteria which says that you should be a citizen and currently be living in any of those four countries. So, let's say if you're a student from India and you're applying for SDS program, but you're living in Dubai or Singapore, then in that case you won't be eligible 
okay so just uh, take a note of that as well apart from that let's uh, now discuss what which all documents will be required so you should have a copy of acceptance letter for college or the university you should have a copy of medical exam confirmation document a proof that you have GIC of 10,000 Canadian dollars a proof of tuition fee of uh, one year of your study and IELTS academics result card as well so basically these uh, if you just see all of these uh, documents are just mapped to the eligibility criteria so you just basically have to prove that you are eligible through all of these documents so guys this was it I hope all the information provided in this video uh, would be helpful to you if you have any comments any queries uh, do post in the comment section below if you like the video if you think that it was useful to you please like the video and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please subscribe also if you think that you know this video will be helpful to any of your friends please share this video with them and get them started thank you so much for watching this video